Hi, this is Professor Scott Norman, and today we are not in the automotive lab at PSU, but it's a summer vacation. Uh, students have all uh, are on summer break, uh, and uh, I am at the uh, Norman Farm, and I was um, checking out my dad's uh, 2003 Dodge truck, and I popped the hood, and I was checking coolant, looking at the air cleaner, and I reached over, and the liquid line, which is right there at the corner of the vehicle, my hand kind of touched it, and I was like, ow, that is super hot. And I was like, I wonder why that, um, why that fan, or I'm sorry, um, why that liquid line is, uh, is, uh, is uh, super hot. And so I happen to have some AC gauges uh, uh, on, with me, and so um, we're going to hook up the gauges, we're going to strike the vehicle, and we're going to look at the pressures and see what's going on. Uh, here, I'll give you guys kind of a shot of my, of my background here so you can see uh, Lost Hill Lake. There's a 1950 Dodge there on that way and we're going to go over to the other way and because sometimes I talk about the farm and so you can see the other half of that. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's start this vehicle and let's take a look at the gauge readings. Okay, so I started up the vehicle and I have the gauges sucked up and right, right away you can take a look at the high side gauges. The high side gauges is at 350, 370, closing up to 400 and the high side service port is on the liquid line so there's 400 pounds of pressure in the liquid line right now the low side pressure is around 45. looks like it's going to about 4 425 psi i wonder when it's going to stop hopefully it stops at some point 450 uh, if it goes to 500 um oh there it goes okay so i just took the ac cycle off oh now the ac cycle's back on again so I heard the AC cycle off and on while I was um, while I was checking out the vehicle, but I didn't think anything about it. So if you take a look at that, how it's cycling off and on, off and on, from looks like 470, 450, and then it cycles back off to get a 400. So what's kind of cool about this particular vehicle, and you can see this, is that it has a radiator over here and a radiator fan, and over here on this side, it has a condenser and a condenser fan. So one of the things that we do with my classes is we tell the students to do a, a dollar bill test. And sometimes I joke around and say, hey, <laughs> do a hundred dollar bill test. So we're gonna try a hundred dollar bill because it's a hundred times better than a one dollar bill. Now, wouldn't it be funny if this thing blew out of my hands and blew out into the light? So what I tell my students to do is that you put your dollar bill on the condenser and it should stay. And in this case, you can see that it is not one of Stay there. I'm holding on this pretty tight. If I come over here to my my radiator fan, it's, it's going just fine. You know, it's staying in there. So there's obviously an airflow problem over here on this particular unit where it's not allowing the system to uh, cool down. So the next step in this process is going to be able to figure out why the electric fan is not kicking on. Because I can kind of reach back here and feel it, and there's absolutely no airflow at all. So it's a lot easier to diagnose something like this where it has a separate fan than if the condenser was in front of the radiator. So we'll take a look at the service manual and see what we can come, with, come up with next. One of the things I want to try to do on this vehicle is that we're going to shut off the air conditioning and we're going to look at the equalization time and we're going to see how fast this equalizer system and, and, and um, this is an orifice tube system. Should be, it should be very fast and if it's quiet out here, we should be able to maybe listen to the um, to the, uh, the pressure equalizing, you can kind of hear the high side and low side pressure uh, kind of hissing, a hissing noise while, while it does that. So we're going to shut up the system and we're, and, and, and we're watching uh, how, how long it, it takes to equalize. So hopefully that got that hissing sound and that was his equalization. So, so I, um, um, I no longer hear the hissing sound and that was roughly 21 seconds is when it equalized out. So again, that's a pretty fast time, pretty normal on an orifice tube system. This is a shot from on top of the engine and so the compressor is, is nice and high. So that's kind of nice. Uh, we're gonna check out the compressor real quick and just make sure it, turns smoothly which it does 
you guys look at this compressor on the side of it, since I can see it, it does look like that there's a, a head in the front. Looks like there's a head in the back. So we're going to call this a, a dual acting uh, coaxial compressor. So, uh, so then that would be a, a swatch plate design. It does have a pressure transducer right there on the discharge line. And so that's what's signaling the fans to turn on, but it's also fig signaling when the pressure is too high to turn off the clutch. So, so I don't have a scan tool with me, but I'm going to assume that the pressure transducer is working correctly because the, um, the, because the clutch is turning off at about 450 PSI. I did check the uh, integrated power uh, system here, uh, integrated power module, uh, and, um, and, and I checked the, um, the fuse for the fan and the relay for the fan, and they're both operational. I jumpered the relay, uh, cavities uh, 30 and 87, and that <laughs> did not turn my fan on. Uh, I can see my fan right there, and it does spin, and I did disconnect and connect that connector quite a few times, and it does not kick on. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do for diagnosis of this fan is I um, I pulled out the um, the fan relay and I installed a um, oh I, I kind of made a you know a jumper relay that I carry around with me. <laughs> yes, I do carry around diagnostic equipment with me everywhere I go, especially at the farm. And so I jumpered the relay and I'm using a test light and um, probing the um, the connector going down to the um, to the light. And so with a with a good um, Test light, uh, actually a test light that has um, that has around um, four to five ohms. So I have lots of amperage going through it. So again, I want a, a low impedance test light. So I have a high amperage. So yep. So I know that that's good. And I'm gonna then test my ground. So I'm gonna turn my test light and put it on a positive terminal and test my ground. And my ground to the um, to the fan is good. So. I was hoping it was going to be a blown fuse or a bad relay, but it looks like it's a, um, a bad fan. The good news is the fan is right here, pretty easy to get to, and so we're going to have to order the fan and, um, and replace it, and we'll have working AC again. So, again, this is Scott Norman, and if you're looking for more uh, technical uh, uh, information and uh, lessons, just follow my Professor Pintane uh, YouTube channel, or you can follow me on Facebook. Just look for Professor Pintane. Thank you very much. You guys have a good evening.